Should we pay more for music? Is anyone even buying physical music anymore? You're gonna own nothing and be happy. Hey everyone, it's Michael. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about physical media. I saw all the articles about Best Buy, how they're gonna stop selling, you know, movies, DVDs, Blu-ray, 4Ks, all that kind of stuff. And I saw the reaction online and I saw a lot of people make videos uh, about the, uh, the news and everything like that. And I was kind of surprised to see that everyone was pretty upset about it. You would think in this digital world that we live in that nobody would really care if Best Buy stopped selling physical movies, but a lot of people do. I watched a lot of videos and uh, a lot of people just like the convenience of grabbing something, you know, off the shelf or not having to worry about Netflix or whatever streaming service taking down a certain movie that they really like. And of course, you have the people who just like collecting stuff. And it got me thinking how we consume music and how much it changed just during my life. I mean, I remember my older sister buying CDs when we were younger and she would pay like 20, 25 bucks for one CD. And I feel like kids now would consider that absolutely uh, insane. Uh, then later, uh, like everyone else, uh, I found out about LimeWire. And then like I assume with everybody else that completely changed my relationship with music. All of a sudden I had access to every song ever. Uh, and then the iPod came out, of course, and then the iPod Touch. And I remember my friend Justin bringing that to school. The iPod Touch came out right around when I was uh, starting high school. So Justin brought it uh, to school and we were right in front of my locker before first period. And we were blown away that the phone, you know, could flip from uh, a horizontal uh, to vertical and, and back and forth. And I wish I had that video so I could play it for you. But that video kind of got lost in time. But uh, yeah, so that's... That's kind of all that all of that that I just said happened in such a short amount of time. I don't know if you listen to music in the shower, but I pretty much always have. So, you know, in high school and in grammar school, I had one of those big, maybe not big, but like medium sized boom boxes that had, you know, CD player, AM, FM radio, uh, cassette player for sure. And you could plug it in and also get like those giant D batteries if you ever wanted to take that somewhere. And you would just put in whatever CD you wanted and you would just listen to that over and over again. And I feel like that's something that kids might not get. We know that most people don't sit down and listen to full albums anymore. Um, but that's kind of how that music at that time became so nostalgic. Uh, for people, or I can only speak for myself, because I listened to, you know, a certain CD over and over again. It was the same thing with cars, right? Before Bluetooth and the aux cord, you had a CD player or a cassette player or maybe both, but either way, you were just listening to whatever you had and you were listening to that on repeat all the time. The albums that immediately come to mind for me uh, were from the band Hit the Lights, uh, This Is a Stick Up, and Skip School Start Fights. I had both of those on CD, and I listened to those things like a million times. I think I can sum up my thoughts here with some help from The Hard Times and an article where they were ranking the uh, Get Up Kids albums. Now that really isn't important to what we're talking about, but the quote is, uh, I couldn't find the author, so I apologize for that. And so this is what the author said about the Get Up Kids last album. So the Get Up Kids, everybody knows them from something they're at home about. That album came out, what, in 1999 or 2000, right? So a long time ago. And this is what the author said about their most recent album, which came out just a few years ago. And if this was an album that came out during the time people were forced to listen to CDs, I'd know every lyric, but since streaming ruins everything, I never think to listen to it. Still good though. And to make it clear, obviously they're having some fun, but even the way they use the word force, it never crossed my mind when I was listening to one CD over and over again when I was in the car or when I was you know, hanging out with friends or, or whatever the case may be. Like I never thought that I was being forced uh, to listen to the same CD over and over again because that's all we had. So there wasn't, there was never any thought of like, oh, let me listen to track two on this CD and then take it out and listen to track five on this other CD because the, the thought just never occurred. And that's how albums and songs got stuck in your head or you became nostalgic for them because even if you only liked track three on album X, eventually if you had it in the car or wherever, like eventually you would have heard track one or track three like just by happenstance because again you never thought that there was any other option and i'm not old man yelling at the cloud here uh, i have spotify too I, I use it all the time but you know i came up in that 2010s emo and pop punk revival so i'm fully aware of the impact that social media 
played in the alternative music scene and just music industry in general. I mean, especially during that time, social media was really exploding. Like I would say before then, not every single person was on social media, but like the 2010s, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, like the boom just kind of happened. So it was so much easier to discover new music and to discover and share the music that you liked and talk to people that had you know similar music interests as you. And it was also you know, easier for bands to get their music out there through you know Facebook or Facebook groups or Twitter and random forums. Everything just got. Uh, a whole lot bigger in a sense because you were talking to the whole world but it, you're kind of got smaller too because it was so much easier for you to interact with a band that could be you know halfway across the world but you could still get their music relatively easily that lunch table of introverted punks and emos expanded worldwide let's get back to physical media how do you buy music do you even buy music or do you just use apple music or spotify I use Spotify, I've had it forever. I think the first time I got it was in college, like early college because they had that student discount. And I like it, but I also have a pretty decent amount of vinyl. I wouldn't say I'm a collector. Uh, for me, I just always thought vinyl was just cool and I always knew it was a way to support my favorite bands. I also love punk, pop punk, emo, and hardcore, so that is another factor. Those scenes are completely tied to vinyl, so when I was in high school, besides merch, every band that I liked was selling vinyl, so it was just that much easier to get into it. Also, the alternative music scene of the 2010s deserves its flowers for saving vinyl. And what about lost media? What about all the bands and artists that came out in that, you know, 2007 to like, 2000 and 2017 or 18 that time frame and what if they never had a physical release what if their stuff is just on youtube or what if it's just on bandcamp or it's a random zip file on whatever blog that you can find online if a certain you know not that youtube is going anywhere but if a certain you know youtube pages that are inactive and haven't been used in years if those get shut down or different blogs or whatever the case may be we can lose a ton of music from that era now ticket prices are so expensive. Vinyl is cool again, but vinyl is also expensive again. I wouldn't sleep on CDs. CD sales went up for the first time since 2004, back in 2021. And sales rose again last year, at least for the UK. And don't sleep on cassettes. Last year was a 20 year high for cassette sales, which I have to say is insane. Uh, I mean, I drive a car from 1995, which has a cassette player. So or like only a cassette player. So it's cassette player or nothing. Uh, well, the radio obviously, but why, why would you ever listen to alternative rock radio in 2024? I don't know, but who's buying all these cassettes? And where do you even buy digital music anymore? And I don't mean like streaming like Spotify or Apple Music, but if I wanted to buy and own forever the MP3 file, where do I go? iTunes or Amazon? I literally can't think of anywhere else. I already see you in the comments typing out Bandcamp, relax. I love Bandcamp, don't get me wrong, Bandcamp Fridays, all that stuff. I think the first time I ever heard about Bandcamp was probably in college. Um, but I don't think the casual music fan knows that Bandcamp exists. If you went on the street and just asked a random person, hey, where would you buy digital music in 2024? I think like 99% of people would say iTunes. And then if you brought up Bandcamp, they would have no idea what you're talking about. I have friends who I definitely would say are more than the casual music fan, but they don't use Bandcamp because their favorite artists don't promote their music on Bandcamp. It's always go listen to our new album or song on Spotify or Apple Music. And this happened like a year ago where Bandcamp Friday was coming around and I was like, hey, maybe you know my friend will be interested in it. I know some of the music, some of the bands that we like and share together are on Bandcamp. So why not you know send them the link, help out the band? And they had absolutely no idea that Bandcamp was a thing. Bandcamp is important, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think the listeners are there. I had this idea. You know how movies go to movie theaters and they're there for four or five months, whatever the case, and then eventually they go to streaming on Netflix or HBO or whatever. Why doesn't that happen for music? I don't know if this is a crazy idea, but stick with me here. Imagine if it's like a major artist, right? It's Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and for the first two months, you can only get the brand new Taylor Swift album. You go to taylorswift.com, you pay, let's just make it 10 bucks for the example, pay the 10 bucks, you get the email, and it has all the songs, you own them, you have the MP3 file, 
you're you know all set to go and then let's say after that two month period then it goes to spotify or apple music i know what you're saying mike they're just gonna illegally download the music like they did 15 20 years ago but i disagree i don't think they would i don't think the casual music fan would go waste their time looking for whatever website it is to download the music before in our hypothetical that after two month period where it would go to spotify or apple music sure some people would no doubt but just look at the same model that i talked about earlier with movies you can still go pretty much find any movie that you want uh, if you know where to look on the internet but you don't these movie studios aren't talking about the big issue about pirating movies because it just doesn't happen as much anymore and i think the same thing for music take me for example i would say i'm more than a casual music fan and i haven't sailed the high seas in years i literally wouldn't even know where to go uh someone a few years ago online made fun of me because i brought up pirate bay and i have never felt older and sure i'm pretty confident i could figure it out pretty quickly but i don't think the average music fan would go through the hassle and they would just happily pay the money and maybe I'm an optimist and you're laughing at me in the comments, but I really think that could work, especially in the alternative music scene where we just want to directly support our favorite bands. I know how hard it is for bands to tour and all this stuff post 2020. And we all saw the merch cut controversy thing that happened last year. Again, we just want to support our favorite bands. So I honestly think this model would work, but I totally get it. It's 1099. You get all the music ever in the world, but you don't own it, you're just renting it, but then why would you pay 10 bucks just to get a digital version of it that's not physical, but then could you bundle it maybe, like how we always get digital codes in vinyl, but even that sometimes doesn't happen. So I don't know, I'm, I'm just spitballing here, I'm just thinking. And maybe I'm not seeing an obvious flaw in my idea, but it's just what came to mind when I saw all these articles about physical media going away. I don't know what the future holds, who knows, maybe Best Buy in a few years will be like, you know, hey, physical media, it's coming back because if you can't buy movies, physical movies in stores anymore, I mean, obviously the prices online would just skyrocket, right? Like Pokemon cards and all that stuff. Is that a weird comparison to make? But like, if you can't buy a 4K anywhere in a store, a Walmart, a Target, or Best Buy, but obviously you're going to buy it online. So at the end of 2025, online sales for stuff like that will be really high, right? Or am I missing something? Who knows? Maybe cassettes will make a comeback. Maybe CDs will make a comeback. Uh, have you seen those retro CD players that have kind of popped up online and on Amazon the past few years? Kind of cool. Those are all my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, tell your friends, and thanks for watching.